on the scene and in some ways embodies everything that B.B. King told me when I was a kid. He just keep doing what you're doing, but keep, keep the blues alive. Keep, keep it alive for the next generation and for the next generation, for the next generation. And I am proud to, to say that I know this man, I respect this man. He is one of the great new towns to come out in the last 10 years. And if I was to lose a Grammy, <laughs> you didn't think I was gonna fucking bring that up, did you? <laughs> if I was to lose a Grammy, I would want to lose it to Chris Tone Kingfish in the environment. You know, it's funny, when we got nominated, not to kick off with this, but um, I saw the list, and Josh Smith and I were talking about it, and I go, it's Kingfish. And he goes, yeah. And I, I knew it. That's why I didn't go. I knew it was you. Hey, I mean, to be real with you, I thought it was going to be you or, uh, or the Black Keys, so. Yeah, if, 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 if there's any guarantees in life, it's not me. <laughs> That, that bet I'll take every Sunday, you know? <laughs> How you been, man? I saw you in Byron Bay a few months ago. Yeah, man, over there with, uh, you know, uh, uh, Uncle Eric Gales and everything, man. It was really cool. cool. Yeah. Yes, sir. How you been doing, bro? Everything's been good. That, the, the day I saw you, I had flown in that morning, played the gig, and we left the next day. It was like, it was like 27 hours of flying for 90 minutes of music, you know? Yeah. Yeah, crazy. But it was fun because I wanted to do it. I, I, want, I wanted to do it with you and and and, uh, and Eric and and all that. So Byron Bay is a blues festival. If you don't know, it's in Australia. It's in, uh, I, it's, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's, it's uh, north of Brisbane or south of Brisbane. I, I, it's all fucking backwards. It's all backwards down there. It's south of Brisbane. Thank you. Thank you. It's faucets. The water goes the other way. I mean, um, so you know. You, you came on the scene and everybody went, wow, what a voice, what a guitar player. And I first, I saw a video of you, it was, you were playing some festival and, and I was like, wow, this, this is amazing. You were out in the crowd, you were working the crowd and, and then I heard you sing. I was like, how did you, when did you realize you had such a voice and a, and a, and a, a talent to play music like you did? Well, um, I had been singing before I even, picked up an instrument. Uh, I come from Clarksdale, Mississippi, which is a historical blues town. Um, my mom's side of the family, all of my uncles and aunts are in church, preachers, and play bass, guitar, drums. So that's who I was pretty much, those were my influences before I even, you know, knew what the blues were, I mean, was. So I feel like that's where the singing and everything comes from, that side yeah. of the family. Yeah. Did, 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 so did you sing in church? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. My my family, my mom's side of the family is, is made up of two uh, different quartet groups. She was a part of one, and my uncles, uh, another group called the Sensational Travelers. I would hang with them. So yeah. Yeah, and, and and you know, it's I think it's it's funny. It's like it's always it, it was always it, it always starts with a family member right. having an instrument or something like that. In my case, it was my father, right. and he it, my father's father was a trumpet player. My, Great, you know, the, the great great grandfather was Trump. So, I mean, like, Bonham has been in yeah, blood yeah, line. Yeah, in, 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 in over, over 100 years. And, but when did you know you, you, you loved it? Because it's one thing you do it is with the family, but then there's another thing that's like where homework or, you know, chores go aside, and then you go, I really just want to play my damn guitar and sing. I feel like there's been a there's been many moments in my career where my love for this has been tested. So it's been a many times, like from first watching Buddy Guy on YouTube, from that to, right. you know, playing a juke joint and only one person is there. Like, I really have to love this to, <laughs> to, to, to do this. Yeah. You know? So, so yeah, I feel like, you know, from those key, you know, those key point moments for sure. So, uh, not that this would ever, I mean, like you're playing big, bigger, much bigger venues now and, and you're killing it, right? 
do, do, do you happen to, I'm speaking of one person, do you know what the golden goose, what they call the golden goose in the business is? Okay, I'll tell you my story. Memphis, 2000. My first record had just come out and we were, we were booked on a, on a Tuesday night on Beale Street. Um, wasn't B.B. Kane's, it was some, it was called Beale Street something, yeah. you know. And in the backstage, it's real quiet, like this. Shows in like 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, maybe, the, maybe they're just still letting people in. Eight o'clock shows up, no opening end. I walk out, there is five people in the club. Me, <laughs> the bass player, the drummer, the sound man, and the bartender. <laughs> and the best part of that whole experience is we were playing for the door. Oh. Zero. Hey. So it does test you because you're out there by yourself. You're out there, you've got to pay your band, you've got to do your thing. And you go, oh my God, I mean, is this really the life that I want? But it, how do you, you know, when, when you are tested, and the music business will test you your whole career, how, what, what, what brings you back to center in the, in the sense that you go, okay, I don't care, I'm, you know, I'm gonna get up and I'm, I'm gonna, one of these days I'm gonna win a fucking grand, did you did. Man, uh, I, I would say, thank you, thank you. Uh, I would say me, man, uh, for one, is the people. You know, mm -hmm. like, I, I'm really big on energy and I feed off energy. So, you know, when I do shows now and I see people out there just, you know, loving and, you know, telling me that I inspired them, and, you know, you know, it's a really beautiful thing because coming from a small town in Mississippi, I never thought I would have that reach. Even when I started playing music, I thought all this, shit was gonna happen later in life, right. you know? So now that it's happening, now I think that that is the main thing that keeps me going. And, and not only that, like, you know, not to be the dead horse, I really love music, so I really right. love this. So yeah, those are two main things for sure. And, you know, one of the things that I, 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 I not, not that I need a reason to respect Buddy Guy more than I do, because I think he's just a beautiful person. I got to spend an hour with him before his show at Montreal Jazz a month ago. He offered me a shot of cognac, which I'm still recovering from. <laughs> and I wouldn't have heard of you if it wasn't for the fact that Buddy Guy championed you early on in your career, took you on the road. Right, right. You, you know. Um, I had first been Mr. Guy and um, his team, I want to say, I opened a show in Virginia. It was like 2013, which didn't mean anything. I had different management at the time. It was all great. And fast forward years later, I got a chance to sit in with him in uh, Portland, Oregon at the Waterfront Blues Festival. Then again, uh, Experience Hendrix came to Memphis, and I got a chance to sit in there again at uh, Tony T.C. Coleman. Uh, for the ones that don't know, you know, uh, drummer for B.B. King for years, he's my goddad. And he called me one day and was like, man, you know, you know, Mr. Guy wants to, you know, he wants to help you. Cause at the time, people knew me, but I didn't have no record out. And one of the biggest things that, you know, Kel Mo kind of taught me was like, man, you, in order to have longevity, you have to have your own shit, your own, you know, you know, have your own, like, you know, like original songs. So, Mr. Guy saw that and uh, put me with Tom Hanbridge, shout out to Tom. And uh, yeah, we made the first record, which was Kingfish. Yeah, yeah. and um, you know, those who don't know Tom Hanbridge, um, mm -hmm. A lot of my best known songs that in, in the last 10 years were co-written with Tom Hambridge. He produced, um, I mean, everyone from the, you know, Susan Tedeschi to, 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 to Kingfish and, and Quinn Sullivan, Quinn Sullivan yeah. and, and he, he is, he is a, he's a, he's a real lover of the blues and he's a, he's a great drummer and producer and makes great records. And, you know, when you when you started writing for the the Kingfish record, did, was Tom involved in there, or did, did you come in with like some concepts, or how how did how did the writing uh, process? I, go? I came in with a few concepts, and we both the first and only writing session we had was at his house in Nashville. So I think it was like twelve songs on that record. So we got like six of them done that day, and some we got like right we got done like right while we was in the studio. Mm -hmm. So I came with concepts, and we would build upon that and just speed off each other. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he works fast. Oh, definitely. 
if you get two hours, three hours, you'd be like, let's write another one. Like, yeah, 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 you know, so. Yeah, yeah, and, the well's dry, man. You know, and, and, and he's done a lot about teaching me about songwriting. I didn't know a lot about storytelling and making the listener visualize. I didn't know anything about that. Like, all I knew was AAB form from blues. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he, yeah, he really opened my eyes to a lot of stuff, so. Um, you're from Clarksdale, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Home of the Crossroads. I, I took a trip there, 2014. My producer Kevin Sher and I we, we I, I always wanted to go to the Crossroads, and we were we were doing a tribute to Muddy Waters and Hollow Wolf right. at Red Rocks for the very first time, and and and, and uh, yeah, it was still the best gig I've ever played, by the way. Um, and we we took a trip down to the to find you know just to go to the, go to the Crossroads because I've been a lifelong dream since I saw that movie with Ralph Macchio, <laughs> you know. And anyway. I find myself in a corner that says, welcome to the crossroads. On one side of the street, there's like a 7-Eleven. And then I found myself in the parking lot. I think you may, you may know this intersection. There's a church's chicken. And, and I'm sitting there going, because I expected it, I expected like this ghostly haunting feeling. And I go, surely this can't be it. It's not. It's in Rosedale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because we drove down the road there, and that yeah. felt right. Yeah, Clarksdale, I'll be real with you. That, that's a tourist trip. You yeah, know, no. You know, you see you got the guitars up there yeah. and, and all that. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's not it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're one of the like, blues commands of Clarksdale is, thou shalt not ask where the real crossroads are. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I've been waiting a decade to meet somebody who, who's from Clarksdale. Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 this has been on my mind for almost 10 years. I, I'm going to be honest with you, like, as a person who loves urban legends and folklore and stuff like that, when I was young, the story captivated me. But as I got older, I realized, I realized you know, uh, you know, he didn't, you know, Robert Justice was telling so. You know, he didn't, yeah. you know, you know like, he just practiced and practiced and, you know, they built upon that folklore. But no, nah, it's, it's not. If it really did happen, it's not in CDL. Uh, are, are, you, are you a big Robert Johnson fan? Oh, I love yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So I have a theory. Now this is just a theory because because I've done the deep dive and, and I and I and I've played along. And what I've noticed with, with Robert Johnson records is there's they're not obviously not concert pitch because he was tuned to himself. But I think the recording machine that that they used both in Dallas and in the other place with. It's slightly sped up his voice. Yeah, 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 I've heard that too. Because it, it's it's higher than you would think, but there's no recordings of him talking to as as a as a as a, as a vantage point to go. Okay, well, is, it, is this sped up or is it not? I think John Tavis Willis one time, uh, who's a phenomenal country blues guitarist in the story. That's my brother. I love him to death. Uh, he sent me a recording one time, and it was like. It was Robert Johnson sped down, and he sounded like a whole different person. His his bass was more, his his, his voice was more bassier, and, and all that. So I definitely yeah, and, and and it's so hard to tell because it's like the machine, the crew directed disc, yeah. and, and you know the power could have been more or less, and and but to me, what regardless of it is, if it was any different, it wouldn't be that. You know, that's the, that's that sound that you hear the very first time and just that just captures you. That's what drawn me to him is that like high pitch piercing voice. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I love singers with like fast and sometimes slow and you know heavy vibratos and that's what you get from, you know, listening to Robert Johnson music, that piercing tone. I've always been drawn to it. So. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, they the original master blues musicians are poets. The, the 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 lyrics are so wonderful. If you just read it down, it's like it's like character. It's it's, it's that level of, of poetry. And it's 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 not just oh my baby left me and, and no, no, it, it is no, no. rooted deeply in the social issues of the time and a hundred years later, still relevant lyrically to this day. Exactly, exactly. One thing I, I try to express that you know blues is life and. It's more than, you know, my baby left me or I was working, nah, 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 you know. When they sung that, they would sing about that life. They wasn't singing about concepts or anything like that, you know, so. 
Yeah, I, and and uh, you know the the more the, the more laps around the sun I I get because I when I was in my twenties when I was in your age they would say you got to live more life to have the blues. I'm like no. Nah. I do believe that now. I do believe that it, 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 the more life you live, the, the more of a story you can tell and more heartfelt the songs become. So um, as a guitar geek, congratulations, Fender. You ever thought you'd look down at that stock and say, see a Kingfish model Fender Telecaster? No, man, not at all. I told you, man. I thought all oh, this was going to come later. Unfortunately, I don't have it here with me because uh, Air France lost both of my guitars. So, uh, it's the same time they've done it. So I'm like over them at this point. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, it's, it's, really, it's really strange. Like, every time I try to carry a guitar on, I get the, you can, sir, sir, <laughs> sir. We're gonna have you arrested. <laughs> you can't take that on there. And I'm like, okay, well, sometimes I buy a seat for the plane. Or yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and and, and and you know, and then they're like, well, don't you have to sit in the, the aisle, and the guitar has to be in the window. I said, well, the guitar wants a gin and tonic too. <laughs> <laughs>